Hey everybody, the Break Canuck here, and Kunak is still a couple of weeks away. We're gaming up, getting everything that we want to get done in Classic completed, and we're super excited and looking forward to Kunak. But a new expansion means a new class tier list, and yeah, thank you so much for... Uh, all the uh, engagement that we had on the classic one. I had tons of people calling me an idiot or saying why this class should be uh, a higher rank or a lower rank in the comments and that was absolutely great. It was so nice to hear all your feedback and maybe a couple of changes you know, in retrospect I, I would have made. So before we start let me preface this is my sole opinion on what I think and how the classes are coming into Kunak. So, if your favourite class is ranked low, doesn't mean it's a bad class, it's just my opinion. It could be, and I'll explain my reasoning why I'm ranking it where it is. But if you disagree, feel free to leave a comment below. Also, um, if you can, if you haven't already, feel free to hit that like and subscribe button. Um, I do this for fun and any any interaction with you all like that is uh, very, very much appreciated. And every like, every comment, every subscriber, like I said, very, very much appreciated. So, with that, let's get right on over into it. Alrighty, the first group that we are going to look at is the tanks. So we're going to start like we did last time with Paladin. Paladin in Classic I had ranked at C. And yeah, I was harsh. I was like, well, they're the tank that you don't want. Or the tank you can only get when everybody else is uh, not looking for group. And that's the only people in the window. And I got a little bit newfound respect for the Paladins. We used Paladins quite a lot in our guild during Classic. Mainly to give reses on the Death Touch mobs. We had a de dedicated Paladin for that. But you know what? That's a, a cool utility of the Paladin. That you can step in to fill that role. Now with Kunak, they don't really get anything new. They get the spells that the clerics get, you know, earlier. They um, get a divine favor, I think, is what they get um, early, early on at level fifty-five, which is like a a, a DA or like a rune. It lets it absorbs some damage. Um, there's not a whole lot going on for paladins so what the paladins get that's new in kunak well they get spells other classes get and that's pretty much it so they get stuff that the clerics get earlier i think they get uh they can use symbol of noltron now so a few nicer buffs but again not the typical buffs that you'll want to be giving out or that you'll want to have say if you've got a cleric or a druid in a guild because at that point or in the group because at that point they're going to be a lot weaker they do um they do get a better res they'll be able to res up to 90 percent but it takes up so much of their mana and you know what clerics have their uh click sticks now but still there's still nothing that really identifies or has something unique for the paladin but they do get a really cool flaming sword and the epic is easy to get and they're really distinctive and there's not going to be all that many around of you on the server. But I can't escape the fact that there's still nothing new for Paladins. They're still going to be in C. Next up we have the Shadow Knight. Okay, not in light. I'm meaning a Shadow Knight so I might be a little bit biased but in classic wow i felt like an absolute tanking god i was wanted in groups i was main tanking in raids i was main tanking everything and it felt awesome you really liked really wanted you know, cool gear i'm full playing our armor uh, i got a really cool sword i've done some of the sky quests like the shield um, so i feel really tanky now last time i put SKs and S for classic and while they do get some new things in Kunark uh, thinking like bobbing corpse which is kind of like a self only DMF they get a new curse 
which is like a lower level net crow one but you know it keeps you up it gives you health from the mob which is really really nice we get a new pet in kunag and you get like the augment as well i think it's equivalent to like the level 44 ish necro pet if memory serves so it's not great but if you're a solo in it can sometimes help be a little speed bump um but not as great at tanking still good tanks still the best probably the best tanks for groups because you've got that snap aggro you can grab it really really quick with the darkness line but raids i'm sorry we lose that crown of being the main raid tanks really the only time i could see sks being like the main tank on a raid in kunag is probably then or Sophia, where it's really important that you don't turn him so sks last time you were s i've we're losing a bit of utility this time. Still really good, but I'm going to go with A. And lastly, on the tank front, over to you, Warriors. Finally, it's been a tough eight weeks, but your time is nearly here. You are going to be the main raid tanks for a very, very long time on most of the raids because you get defensive in kunak and i won't say the warriors have necessarily been doing a bad job in classic um in my guild what we've been trying to do is rotate so we're not always using sks we do sometimes for warriors into tank lineups um to give people that experience more than anything else and to let them have a go at tanking but what i found is the warriors have had so more so much more trouble keeping hold of aggro than when an sk has been tanking uh, it was way, way more common to see monks pulling aggro when a warrior's tanking or necros or when they forget to rain death or, or even a ranger. So, but that's going to become less of an, an issue now because you're getting better weapons that hold aggro. Um, you're finally getting your lightsabers, even though the DPS one isn't very, very good. And you're going to be either replacing that or maybe situationally using a shield. Um... I think I rated them too high in Classic. I put them in A, and to me that was too high. Um, I think for Classic, they're competent group tanks, they're competent Ray tanks, but they do sometimes struggle to snap that aggro. They don't have that management right now that the SK has. Um, but because of the lightsabers, because of that better aggro management, and because they are going to be the main Ray tanks for here on out, I am happier to leave you in A. Alright, moving on to healers. Ten or so weeks ago, I got a lot of flack from Druid players because I put Druid solidly in D because they're the Jack of all trades, master of none. At least that was my probably misconception of them at the time. That was also before they made a couple of changes, Daybreak made a couple of changes to the way charm works and uh, like a mob type that made druids certainly more viable. And it was also really before I saw the perks in action and I've seen druids capable of some really fun things uh, when using some of those perks correctly. Um, now coming into Kunark in terms of what they get it, nothing really new I, I would say except maybe form of the hunter which is the wolf illusion gets more for funsies than anything else a slight attack upgrade but not massive some more nukes to get a fairly sizable single nuke um wildfire but other than that nothing nothing wow nothing that makes the class stand out but that doesn't matter because in my opinion, this is going to be utilized really, really well in Kunark because of the charm. And where is that going to be used? That is going to be used primarily in Chardock. Because those Chocodies can be charmed. And the low level ones make for great pets that just add to the Druid utility. They have a very easy epic as well, so they'll all be epic early on. But there's no real, like, I don't think there's like anything really new for them in terms of like the healing other than the heal over time 
um, spells that they get. Uh, there's no, they're still not as good as clerics healing. So I had them in D last time, and I got a lot of flight for that. Okay, I admit I've seen the light. Druids are not D. They're going to be slightly better, and they're going to be C. Okay, I know some of you aren't going to be happy with that still. Yes, they've got more utility in groups now, but that 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 lack of a big heal is still an, an issue for me going into groups. The charm, yeah, it's going to be great in Sebelis as well now because of the spiders, the ability to charm spiders, so maybe a druid will charm one of those on a raid, I don't know, we'll see. Um... I I'd still struggle with druids in that there's not many of them on the server and a lot of people still don't know what really they're going to be capable of so you might still find it difficult to get groups and for that reason yeah you better but I'm going to go with a C. Please don't be mad. Alright carrying on with the healers. Shamans last time I had you ranked at A. And I think the problem with shamans in classic is you spend so much time buffing those single target buffs that everybody wants. It takes forever. It sometimes feel like that's all you are doing. Um, Kunark, you finally get group buffs, and that is going to make your buffing so much easier. Yes, they use a lot of mana, but you're not getting tell windows like crazy with from people asking for buffs. And it, it really is going to make you uh, your playing on raids a lot more enjoyable than having to manage tower windows and people complaining when you're not buffing them fast enough. So, huge plus for shamans right there, group buffs, finally. But, you also get some really cool fun spells in Kunark with Torpor, which is a huge regen. It doesn't last long, but it's a huge, huge regen. Uh, Avatar, which is a massive attack boss. Every melee is going to be bugging the Shaman who gets Avatar first for that because it's a huge DPS increase for those looking to top DPS passes. You get a better Mallow as well, so keep an eye on those charm pets to cast that and cast it as soon as uh, it lands on. As soon as the boss comes in, you get a new slow again um, that you're going to be wanting to be casting. So, uh, even more utility for shamans than what there was last time and there's so much more fun to play and your epic is still an easy epic to to do um and it looks cool so i uh yeah shamans easy s for me in kunark i've always loved playing a shaman in kunark and if you are playing a shaman on all right clerics i have a box cleric right and it uh, it follows me around it casts heal very easy to play and that's still my problem with clerics. Uh, last time I rated them quite highly as an A. And everyone has a box cleric. You see so many of them running around on raids, box clerics sometimes. My guild aren't typically using them. We're all mains, it's really good fun. Um, but they're always there and a lot of guilds are using box clerics on splits. Or just for the regular raids. Um, and in groups, you see a lot of people who set up groups have a box cleric that's already in there. And that's kind of half the problem with clerics, is they're very easy to box. Having said that, they're even easier to box in Kunark with group spells. Again, like the um, the Shamans, you're going to be getting some a lot more group spells. Um, the like Heroic Bond, which is a nice... Um, uh, start increase AC hit points all that kind of good stuff some more group heals as well a new symbol um, you get a hammer um, the pet hammer which is actually really useful on some fights especially those stupidly long fights in Valius you know, every cleric should have a hammer out damaging on, on those fights in my opinion um, yeah fortitude new a lot of new AC buffs um, nothing really new just better and more of better heal over time um slash your licks are i think you get a higher up at level 59 and of course you get uh di which is a really important spell to keep cast on your tanks uh, you want to make sure that doesn't fall off so as soon as you get level 60 you may be looking to be casting that all the time um and of course you get your click stick so that's kind of what you boil down to is right clicking that stick when you uh when someone dies so 
I um, I can't put clerics in S and I can't put clerics in A because of just how easy they they are to, to box and that is my problem with clerics um, so yes they you know in kunai yes they get a lot more utility but they get even easier to box and for that reason I'm gonna put them in B yeah let's look at some of the DPS classes now and we're gonna look at the the monk last time I had monks in S and thinking back to be honest on um, the classic I think I had them overrated now I do miss my Aradun monk that I played in Aradun that monk was awesome but on that monk I had all the sky items completed by like week two or week three of the server I was the best geared monk on the server for a very long time during classic and it was fun having the quest monk face the quest bell and you know, it was it was just fun running around like that um, but monks have definitely had some problems firstly with getting gear um, the monk items seem to be the one of the least common drops out of fear if you're not there all the time in open world or popping picks to to get some of it your monks are going to struggle they have to go through that full quest now uh for the headbands and to get the robe for the uh the epic um having said that though they are still a lot of fun and they've been doing well they're the main pullers for your raids still at this point they do a lot of dps if you have any camp monks uh as i had to call them and they they are all around if you are like to be punching things um they're very very good and a change that has actually made them i don't know if it's made them easier to play or made certainly made them easier to box to if i'm going to be honest and that is with the auto skill because now instead of pressing kick you can just have it on auto skill and you never have to press it again so if you want to box monk there's never been a better time because you can just pull the mob in have it positioned for the monk and you never have to worry about its hotkeys ever again it will kick and do all that uh, itself or the only time maybe that you'll have to do is to feign death if you're pulling aggro but that's kind of it um, so even easier to box now coming into kunak the biggest dps increase they will get for themselves is inner flame and it's really important that monks know when to use inner flame because of its uh, recharge so you don't want to go uh, blowing it on the start of the night when you're doing sev for instance because you probably want to save it for tracking on and likewise if you're going into uh vision's peak you probably don't want to use it on silver wing you're going to want to save it for faradar or even probably hoshkar because that's the harder one um, and if you're not using Inner Flame, I think the other one you typically use is Thunder Kick, um, is the second best one. I think it's the one, no, not Thunder Kick. Forget me, forget me. It's Ashen Hand Discipline, which is like the second best one, best one because that increased a whole bunch of, uh, skills. Um, but Inner Flame is typically the one that you will, uh, be wanting to use when you want to do a lot of damage. You want to top those passes and you want to get mobs down quick. Inner Flame. And that's down you're using typically ashen hand if memory serves me right um coupled with a shaman still really really good but where where do they go well you're still the main pullers you get a really cool epic with the little discs that come out of your fists uh your gear still looks like trash and it always will so uh, i'm not even gonna look at that one to be honest because you'll always look like a level one monk uh for most of the time um so where where are you gonna go monks i think you still ask i just think you get so much more utility in um kunak with the inner flame you've got buttons to press now still even though you'll have uh, a few of them removed with auto skill coupled with shaman you're really good you it's easier to box and in my view that's sometimes a bit of a negative of my class but i still really like monks you're still gonna be doing lots and lots of damage so for me you're still very much an s Alright, next up we have the Ranger. I think last time on Ranger I had them as a B, I think. Um, now, Rangers, they are a class at this point not many people are really playing. They always look really, really fun, but um, you know, you can tank okay sometimes. You can... Um, you, you can do a little bit of healing, a little bit of 
damage, a little bit of dotting, a little bit of buffing, but nothing really like, whoa, look at this guy, look at this ranger. Um, now, rangers going into Kunark, um, you get a lot of druid hand-me-downs, okay? And that's kind of it. You don't really, for me, start becoming a better class until uh, Velius. When you get, uh, I think it's Weapon Shield is Velius. So that makes you really good. Until then, you're a bit of a class with much of an identity, in my opinion. Now, everyone's going to want to play a Ranger when it comes to Lucklin because of uh, the headshot. Uh, and because the DPS goes off the charts. But for Rangers, Kunak, for me, from what I've seen and what I remember, Kunak is a really low point for Rangers. So I'm, for me, in going into Kunak, yeah, they're they're a D. I, I like the swords though; it's a cool effect, the, the the lightning. Hold it out though; you you get good. Your time's gonna come. You start getting really good um, in Valius, and you know, they can be MVPs when you're outranging the. Uh, uh, the stupid uh, effects of like Lady Nev with uh, your archery, so hold it out, you'll get there. Just good night's not for you. Rogues, last time I had you in D. Do you do good DPS? Yes, when the mob is positioned right. And that's half the problem is sometimes tanks don't keep mobs positioned very ni nicely or mobs are turning around and then you're eating reposits and you're um, you're not doing the damage because you're not behind the mob. Um, do people want you in groups? No. <laughs> for the most part, no. Uh, just rather go for something that brings a bit more utility. But do you bring good sustained DPS? Yes. Um, I... Uh, Order skill, yep, that helps and made it easier to a degree. Do you get a few more disciplines now that make you better, um, you know, give you more buttons to press on raids? Yes. Um, but, you know, rogues, typically my choice to be the main assist for a raid because they should always be targeting something and always be stabbing something. So I like to use rogues for that. So you do have a, a role to play on raids. But um, I'm hoping in Kumkunak you'll start moving up the pass. And it's hard for me because Rogue's probably the only class I've never really played. And you know what? I've never even wanted to play them, to be honest. It just doesn't appeal to me. Um, but I'll be nice. You know, you get a little bit more utility. Um, I do think you'll start doing a lot more damage because of that coming into Kunak. So I'll be nice. I'll put you in C this time. I'll, I'm still going to have messages Anna, and comments that no, they should be higher. They should be A because we're awesome. But uh, leave a message down below if you think I'm still wrong. All right. So moving on, we're looking at the Bard. And last time I had Bards as a very solid B. Um, useful class, good fun to play. And coming into Kunak, not an awful lot is really going to change for you. Yes, you get a new heal. Yes, you get um, probably one of the better spells uh, in the game at this point at level 51, which is Cello Song of Travel. Um, yes, you get a, a new Mez. Yes, you get a new Haste. But there's still there's no new Charm. You're still not going to be the main pullers until usually until you get fade, in which case you take that over. Um, you know, there's so many badly played bards out there that just kind of sit there, in their boxes. You're just playing the melody, and that holds them back a little bit. And their um, uh, their epic is one of the not tougher ones, but you just need some drops, some uh, like tracking on that are just awkward to get. Um, and you don't get many of them, so there's always a few bards that are waiting towards the end of the expansion because there just isn't enough tracks to uh, to take down to fulfill all bards with their epic early days. So I I think with the with really the loss of a good charm and nothing really totally new, I'm gonna put bards in C as well. 
All right, finally we're moving on to the casters. Enchanter, Enchanter. Probably the class that has actually disappointed me the most. I had them in S and I've, um, don't know, I've just been really disappointed by by the Enchanter. I, you're on raids, you're getting tells like crazy for buffs, so that's pretty much all you're doing and managing charm pets and then your charm pet breaks and someone tries to kill it and um, you're having to quickly uh, mez or recharm it and hopefully someone mallowed it uh, while you were doing that and then it doesn't die. Yeah, or, and at the same time you're getting 10 tells for clarity or uh, haste so <laughs> that's uh that's enchanter life on raids um not a, not necessarily the most fun class ever to play on raids but in groups it's still really good because every group will still want at least one charm pet and you're the best at it and you know you will still feel like gods in groups um charm pets aren't quite as good as, you, as they used to be yes but they're still awesome and that doesn't change in Kunark, especially in Chardock, especially in Sebelis, there's some really good pets that you can get that will you know, increase a group's DPS 50-60% easily still. So, nothing really stand out new. Yeah, um, new clarity and visions of grandeur and a new Tash and all that kind of stuff. Um, but, can I still have them in S knowing kind of what I've seen so far I don't think so I think they have to be down to an A uh, because of how awkward that they have been in classic and coming into Kunark not massively a whole lot new clarity too yay um, a new stone great cripple great but shamans get that too um, a new mez uh, kintas that's gonna be good for doing those high level ones um, and a charm that goes up to 58 so really good strong I think they just lose some of the uh, razzmatazz, if you want to call it, of the class um, that you know I've always been raving about. A lot of people have dropped off playing them as well. You see a lot of people start them and they've kind of dropped off at this point because of, I think, all the tells that you get on raids. So for me, that's an A. All right, moving on, Magician. Refresh in classic B B class middle of the road magician. I've leveled up two magicians in classic, and the reason is because in Kunark, Call of the Hero is one of them. It's really good to have magicians in place in some zones to get raids done quickly. Um, it's really good to move groups around with a magician quickly, even if they're out of group. And going into Velius, you need magicians for the pet cheese, sadly, and every guild out there will be utilizing mage pets for that to build to pre-build aggro and if they say they don't they're lying um actually you know a fun <laughs> i say a fun class to play because it's pet attack stand up after a minute not a minute but after some seconds and then uh, cast a nuke and then sit back down and that's been mage life for me Keeping a DS on the tank, uh, using Mallow when I'm needed to use it, um, but in Kunark, that doesn't again that doesn't really really change. Um, they're still doing a lot of the same things, DSing, still having some decent nukes, and obviously not as good as the Wizard nukes, but enough that they bring some damage. Um, they start doing a little bit more in terms of utility, and I'm thinking along the lines of. Uh, obviously called the hero is a is a big big one um, but they start getting like the face masks for pet that you can give the muzzle of madu which is uh, like a haste item so that's really really good as well and yeah that's kind of it for magicians right now i don't think um well actually when is the um um What's it? Mod Rod as well. I'm forgetting the Mod Rod. That's a huge one. That's a huge utility. Everyone should have a Mod Rod, mod rod before a fight. Every single person sh um, who casts mana should have a Mod Rod because they're great. Um, they can make or break a raid. That extra little bit of mana they give is an extra heal for a cleric or two. Is an extra 
uh, dot from a necromancer is uh, you know and so on so that's a fantastic bit of utility I can't believe I almost forgot mod rod but I didn't if I had I'm sure there would have been a 50,000 got you forgot mod rods no no um, but doesn't you know that's what you bring to raid so you'll be casting a lot of mod rods uh muzzles of madu and then call the hero in people because we need people to cough up to uh yelling at the room in sky shrine because running a raid there is absolutely awful and takes far far too long um so yeah that's where i am with magicians i don't think that kind of changes i think you're still a b and i'm happy with you in b necros last time necros was c and from what i've seen kind of with necros um is that we started off with lots of necros on the server and there's very few left now they've all dropped off um i think our first raid with what we did as a guild we had like eight necros and now we have like half of that um not quite sure necessarily why that is maybe they got fed up with uh, looking for a group but they all hit max level uh, necros king classic um in kunark dead men floating huge utility huge buff that you don't have to go single clicking through whole raids anymore getting that on everyone you get a new pet i, I it's the worst pet ever that huge um thing that follows you around as opposed to the skeleton so i always have to illusion it you know the emissary of thule i think it is which is like a big um is that the big spectre i know they get one that's a big spectre and it's really annoying and i always have to change it to something else um that might be a bit later oh your pets are pretty decent um you get some new dots some really good new dots you're gonna really start going up the dps rankings on raids necro should be at or near the top or a lot of raids and i played a necro on finny and i really love that character it was an awful lot of fun um, charm is also useful in Kunark, especially in Chardock. There's a lot of skeletons there that you can um, charm, and a well played Necro with a cleric can easily take down the Royals if you know what you're doing. Maybe I'll show you if I can get a friend to, to step in and help who's a Necro. Maybe we can do it, and I'll record it for the for the channel to show you how to do it. Um, don't know, maybe. Or maybe I'll just keep it for myself. Uh, Necros, I, I had you see last time. I'm going to put you in B because I like to see. I like to see the more damage on raids. I like that there's more dots, and I like that DMF is such a fun um, thing to have. And of course, Circle of Shadows that really is such a and a must-have item for a Necro. And I'll do a video on that. But why you absolutely have to have it. Um, but that makes again just play necros even more fun in solo or group situations and finally wizard last time i had wizard in c and um i leveled a wizard to 50 as well in classic why because i um, hate running everywhere it's always nice to have a porter and maybe i'm just not a very good wizard because i just pulled aggro like crazy if i nuked too early um I, i'd probably more on the wizard than on my other characters um because i'd pull aggro uh maybe i'm just a bad wizard um what did he get in kunark uh, a very hard to complete epic because of the uh, not very hard but a, a competitive one early days to get the broken golem in fear um that's a down point in my book um so they get off to get new nukes I and mean, that's the whole class really isn't it nukes and ports for the most part um that doesn't really change you get bigger nukes as the level that do all kinds of pbaoe's tight today's you know all those kind of stuff um lure of ice sun strike you know they get a lot more lures which is kind of fun because that's um you know always gonna hit as opposed to some of the bigger ones which you know, could be resisted they get a pet um that i sometimes see out not very often because uh, it dies really easily and uh, the problem I have with wizards is probably the probably the most boring class I've played to date. Sit, 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 stand, nuke, sit, 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 stand, nuke, yeah, you know, sit. <laughs> Hopefully you don't pull aggro and die. Um, you took a lot of DTs for us in classic. That was good. You know you always led the charge on uh, in plane of sky. 
Um, that's going to change because you can start doing damage there with the lures. Um, we'll use bards for that moving forward probably because they don't need the mana. Um, I, I I just really struggle with... And maybe it's just me after playing one on the Alanak. I really struggle with the class. Um, I think it gets a lot more fun when you start getting uh, tools with the AAs and mana burn and things like that. Uh, and I'll certainly have a look at it again for Velius. Um, my wizard I'm replacing in um, Velius 100% for a Shaman. Because moving around is not as big of a deal come Lachlan and certainly not come Pop. So I don't need a wizard for that and slow almost becomes a requirement uh, uh, from pop forward on a lot of mobs even on group content you really need slow because they pump out so much more damage uh, in pop in uh, god in omens of war and i had them in c last time but from what i'm thinking for kunai you're gonna do a lot of damage on raids but i don't want to see you dying and pulling aggro and i know it's gonna happen i know it is like someone's gonna pull it and then the wizard panics, runs around and ends up pulling mobs away from where they should be. I see it happening all the time. I don't 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 hate, I'm gonna put you in D. Alright, so that's my tier list for going into Kunai of my ranking for the classes in Kunai. I've probably missed a whole bunch of stuff. Um, it's hard to remember every class or every expansion, what they get, what they don't get. Um, Kunai, uh, I think most classes do generally get a little bit better for the most part. Some classes, like I said, the wizard probably drops off a little bit. Um, I think bar drop off a bit because they lose some utility, if anything and most classes kind of stay similar sad that sk is not going to be the main tank anymore i've loved having that role again in classic and that's not going to be something i'm doing moving forward into kunark which is a sad face hey ho um let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section Tell me where I'm right. Tell me where you think I've got it wrong, but tell me why. Uh, maybe I've got, again, some misconceptions about some of these classes. But Druids, I did move you up this time, so be nice. Um, other than that, thank you for watching the video. More videos coming as we push forward towards Kunark and into Kunark. So, if you can, like and subscribe. Really appreciate it if you could do that if you haven't already. But other than that, I am the Breaker Note, this is TBC Plays, and I hope that you have a fantastic day.